Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on scraping, where we're going through and learning all the intricacies of web scraping. In the last video we left off, we went through some CSS information or cascading style sheets, you know, to reference on HTML, really on what makes up a web page or an HTML document. These are the things, you know, that are essential to know when we're going through and scraping information. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to actually learn a little bit more about the scraping documentation of adding some items that are going to allow you when you modify the file to retrieve further information, just mainly more context, uh, running a couple tests and setting up a new spider. We, you know, we were working on our second spider, but here we're going to tweak it a little bit just to run uh, a test, as I mentioned, and we're going to take it from there and continue to go through web scraping to familiarize ourselves even more. And before we actually start pushing our spider further and extending this algorithm, what we have to do now is we're going to dive into the scrapey documentation because we have to work with items a little bit. And what we can see if we navigate over to the scrapey documentation on the following web link right here, we can see that the items, the main goal in scraping obviously is to extract structured data from unstructured sources, typically web pages. Okay. Scrapey spiders can return the extracted data as Python dicks or dictionary. While convenient and familiar, Python dictionaries lack structure. It's easy to make a typo in a field name or return inconsistent data, especially in a larger project with many spiders. And you can go through this information to familiarize yourselves even more with it. We're just going to touch on these top facts, just as such as the following. To define common output data format, Scrapey provides the item class. Item objects are simple containers used to collect the scrape data. They provide a dictionary like API with a convenient syntax for declaring their available fields. And this is the main takeaway. Scrapey provides the item class. Item objects are simple containers. And we can see if we scroll down that when we are declaring items, items are declared using a simple class definition syntax and field objects. And it gives us the example. And we're going to see that in a moment when we actually import and edit our items and objects. You can see we import Scrapey. We have the class of product. And we have the fields. You know, name equals Scrapey field, price equals Scrapey field, and so forth. And if you go down, you can see more about the item fields, working with items, creating items, and getting field values, etc., etc. We're not going extensively that far in we're just going to make a couple new fields for our items and we're going to go from there and with that being said let's jump into our folder structure you can see we're looking for the items.py file if you go to the main folder structure we're going to go into example example and we find the items.py now i have it already set and you can see we have our new items created we have some fields defined such as headlines we have separate fields are for url uh, project date and you can see the this is a just a quick definition or another example we have the id as scrapey field the name to a scrapey.field and the description this is how we're setting up the fields for the spider you can pass in the following for our new item class that we're going to use and in a moment we're going to actually import that with an import statement using our scrapey but again navigate into the folder structure go into your items that pi file open it up and you can use this information to paste in there this again is probably the clearest example of using the fields and setting up items within scrapey and it's going to make more sense when we start building this spider out a little further but it's uh, good to take note and good to actually add this in now so we can actually run our import statement so let's get that set up all right, so now we launch back into Spider. We have our second Spider that we're working on. I did delete some information, so we had a class and everything set up, but that's fine because we're going to go through now. We're going to set up uh, our import statement and a class real quickly with an allowed domain and our start our URLs, and then we will be parsing information to return it and examining it. Let's first start with importing what we just referred to with our items. We're going to from example, because it's in the example folder, items. We want to import new item or what you titled it, what you called it, you know, we had it called is as new item. Following that, you can see it's going to state that it's unused, but again, we just passed it in. 
we need to set up our we need to set up our main class as our second spider. We've done this before, so it should be somewhat familiar. If not, that's fine. We're going to go through it again. We're going to call this our second spider. We're going to do scrapey dot spider to add these to call it. Now we have to pass in our main information, which was we're naming with this line the spider. Let's call it second spider. I would like to capitalize it, even though it's second spider, even though it might, it's the same as the class. So let's take that. I take that back. Let's actually just leave it uncapitalized as second spider. If you have it capitalized, that's not a problem. We'll call it second spider. Now we want to actually set allowed domains. Now an allowed domain is essentially a list. We're going to take a look at the documentation. An optional list of strings containing domains that the, the spider that we're building is allowed to crawl requests for URLs that actually don't belong to the allowed domains in the list or their subdomains won't be followed if offsite middleware is enabled. So, you know, it provides the example here. Let's say your target is example.com, then adds example.com to the list. You know, it's a way to basically be being able to establish and setting up a list for your spider to crawl through while also making it organized to make sure it doesn't go out and crawl uh, unnecessary or additional information. All right, so let's get moving back on this. I'm not going to try and go through this too quickly, but I do want to get through it because ideally I would like to wrap this up in this video or the beginning of the next one so we can start building a much larger and more intricate spider. I haven't decided what yet, so it's going to be a surprise, at least regarding the the topic, it's either going to be involving something like Twitter or IMDB or, you know, just a larger spider so we can really pick it apart and see what's going on for reference and for information and just, you know, generally to learn from it. So all that being said, let's jump back in. Now we have our name set. We can set our allowed domains, which we just discussed, and it's going to be, we're going to use, I actually want to test this out real quick. I want www.superdatascience.com, close parentheses. Now with this, you use the www because it wants the domain with the start URLs. We're going to, as you'll see, use the HTTP. We're going to set our start underscore URLs equals HTTPS. superdatascience.com. All right, close that. Okay, now we're going to jump down and start parsing. Fine. Parse. We have to pass in self and our response. You know, response object for Scrapey. We also are going to now work with our items. We're setting our item, what it wants to parse, equal to new item. And now what I have done here is actually I pasted in what we're going to be using to finish up this spider. Now you can see that we have our item passed in. We're using the response off of the X path of this text to extract. We're going to be extracting again using these selectors. In a moment, we're going to explore a little more about what selectors are. We have the same for this item, the response of the X path, the same for this item, response of the URL. We're actually using our item to get the name of the project and the item to get the name of self dot name for our spider. And when we go through and we run this to visualize it in a moment, you'll see it'll become more clear. Let's take a look at selectors really quickly. We can see some information about response selectors. Uh, I was actually just experimenting with a couple. You know, feel free you know, look at the response path on this off of the X path. You're actually on this one uh, are using off of CSS. You can go through this and just you can feel free to switch them in and test in a moment we're going to go through and actually see some results so once you get the results you can pass some new ones in and experiment with these selectors and really retrieve and then uh, inspect the web page to find other selectors that you can use and to go from there you know experiment learn test new things is just a great way to familiarize yourself with scrapey these are the selectors that you can use again take a look at scrapey's uh, selectors page. I would say selectors is somewhat self-explanatory in the sense of it is selecting or it's using these variables to select data to retrieve 
from the HTML web page. Now what we can do, since we went over that selectors, we have built our spider. Now just a basic spider, we're gonna use as the selectors to retrieve further information. We are going to now launch a terminal, since we're gonna run it. First thing we gotta do is run the activation command. So I'm gonna run source activate scrapey environment. If you're on Windows, use activate. If you're on Mac or Linux, use source activate. I'm gonna run scrapey environment. Now I also want to go into my folder with my spiders. I actually am gonna use it this way. I have my, my spiders open. I'm gonna go back to that really quickly. And I'm going to drag and drop and run that. So I am in my folder of spiders. I can get rid of that for the moment. Bring back up my terminal. And we're gonna run the following command. We're gonna run scrapey, so we're using a scrapey, crawl as the main command. Name of our spider, so it will be second spider. And I'm going to use the following as output. And I want to call it example.csv. And we can run it. Okay, Scrapey has run. You can check the, the information here for some additional references, um, additional scraping information. But we want in this to open up your folder. If you go back into, I'll pull it into the center. If you go back into spiders, if you go into your folder of the spiders and you pull up the following, we can see that it logged the information in in CSV for comma separated values. It's not the prettiest as we can see, it still needs some tweaking and some information. We can see the headline that it pulled, the uh, home, the super data science, big data, analytic careers, mentors, and we can see the other headline that it's using. Because if we go back, what it's pulling is using these selectors. So what I want you to think about and some project ideas is take a look at what you're scraping and see if you can actually pull using the selectors just specific variables to have them neatly organized in the CSV. It's just a great idea. It'll help you learn the documentation further. Again, use the selectors to pull specific data from the page. And going back quickly through it, we see the project name of example, since it's what I called the name of my folder. We see the spider as it's called second spider, and we see the URL as in superdatascience.com. Now, the good takeaway is this just presents another data format. You know, I work with CSV often, so it's just for me, you can use pandas to set up a data frame if you're using CSV. It, it makes the data much more easier to work with. So another awesome function of Scrapey to return this and being able to select specific values off of the page with these selectors just comes in very handy when you're scraping data. All right, awesome work, great job making this far. If you have any questions, please share them, any comments or ideas, feel free to post them. As I mentioned earlier in the next video, we're gonna be starting on something a little more intricate, a little uh, larger uh, for a spider. As always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will find up to date weekly information. It's just a really great tool to help keep you in the loop of what's going on within the industry. And I'm excited to see you in the next video. We'll be pushing Scrapey even farther.